there's also a, a deepening of those old fault lines uh, of, of caste, um, uh, of gender, uh, and uh, in a way, there are sort of grotesque new manifestations of it. Uh, one example, of course, is the flogging in Una. Um, and um, would you say that uh, with, with all these new uh, distortions of uh, what Indian culture is supposed to be about, obviously you know, those old fault lines are only going to be deepened? Uh, I'm not quite sure what fault lines means, but... Um, Cast and so on. Yeah. No, you see, this uh, idea of Hindutva maintains that India is Hindu. This is the country of Hindus. The Christians, Muslims, uh, Christians, Buddhists, Sikhs will be tolerated. The Muslims are our enemies. All these people are outsiders, but we will tolerate uh, the Christians and the Buddhists and the Sikhs. But the enemy, which is Musalman, has to be told where his place is. If he's going to live in this country, he's here on sufferance. So that's the situation. Mm -hmm. And the fault lines certainly are deeper there. Mm -hmm. There's another fault line under this Hindutva, and which is developing, and I brought that into my book, um, the Dalits. Because Hinduism, as we know, is responsible for many crimes, but for two great crimes. One is Sati, and the other is untouchability. And what is happening today, there's a kind of cow mania set in motion mm -hmm. by uh, mm -hmm. the ruling party, mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be cow rakshaks, who are supposed to protect the holiness of the cow. And the Dalits recently rose up uh, and declared, and it was a big uprising, not nothing small, no little minor revolt, saying, the cow's your mother, you look, look after her, you deal with her, and they will not lift cow carcasses anymore. They made that quite plain. So there are this kind of fault lines which are mm. raising uh, uh, a revolt of this kind among Mm. certain sections mm. of people, the Dalits primarily. Mm -hmm. And this would have, I think, delighted the heart of Mahatma Gandhi and of, of Ambedkar. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> you know, when we I, I just spoke about the political earlier, <clears throat> I also should have added uh, the ideological, because one of the very strong threads running through this novel is of course something that a lot of us are remembering these days, which is the German example. So you actually have a character, um, a, a German who's in India and says, well, our past is your future and your novel suggests that it is all already here. Um, you know, can you talk a little about this, this um, uh, parallel? Uh, you take it actually beyond the nation theory, uh, it, it's a masculinist kind of narrative, it, it, it uh, implies eugenics, um, it, it implies ethnic cleansing. Um, would you talk about this uh, parallel? Uh, yeah, you see, the reason that I, I have brought the <clears throat> German comparison is partly based on fact because um, well, let me begin by saying that uh, the Hindu Mahasabha was the ancestor mm -hmm. of the BJP, mm -hmm. of the RSS. Mm -hmm. There was no RSS back in 1925, 26, mm -hmm. when the Hindu Mahasabha was mm -hmm. founded. But it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's descended from that mentality. And the Hindu Mahasabha was greatly enamored of the rise of dictatorship in Europe, 
I think in the 1920s, maybe Hitler was not yet uh, in the saddle, but Mussolini was. Mm -hmm. And so a uh, representative of um, this Hindu Mahasabha had even gone in to Italy and met Munje. Munje. I put him in the book. Yes. He had gone and met Mussolini. Mm -hmm. And Mussolini had advised him that from childhood, the mind must be trained for war, must be prepared for war. So why? Because the Hindu Mahasabha had always believed that Mahatma Gandhi uh, was a, a bad event in India because he emasculated the Indians through his nonviolence. He weakened them. He made them a no good lot, you know. And that memory must be obliterated. That's why Nathuram Godse killed Gandhi, because that had to be wiped out. We had to become a militant nation. Mm -hmm. And the connection between the European dictatorships and the Hindu Mahasabha was very strong. And those were their icons. So that's why I brought in this German character. With variations. At the end, he says, well, of course, he's, he's there are Indian variations. No, no, no. But, uh, but it's yeah. true. Uh, yeah. the, the point is that there are historical parallels. Yeah. And uh, because uh, a lot of people will sort of defend uh, the lack of parallel in a literal way, I think it's important to point out that, uh, uh, of course, for example, we have caste, you know, uh, there it was race, maybe. Uh, so these variations, and in fact, the eugenic parallel, recently uh, no, there was talking, a suggestion. Talk, uh, talking about caste, mm. the director of cultural information, uh, mm. cultural transformation. transformation in my book, he says mm. caste is a beautiful thing, you see, because through caste, we have developed, developed skills. skills, you know, mm -hmm. and we have refined skills to a great extent because of caste being carried from generation to generation. So he is, mm -hmm. there are four castes, mm -hmm. and there are four outcasts, you know, the untouchable must remain so. But as far as eugenics are concerned, there was, uh, under the Nazi rule, there was this um, experiment in eugenics to produce a, a superhuman race of Nazis, future Nazis, who Aryans. would rule the world. Aryans. <laughs> Aryans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Hitler's slogan when he uh, began um, invading uh, Czechoslovakia and Austria and so on, his slogan was, Europe today, tomorrow the world. And in order to rule the world, there had to be a superhuman race uh, made up of uh, uh, Europe's master race, which would be the Aryan race. And there was, of course, no such thing. So it had to be produced through a scientific experiment where uh, the, the, a certain type the blonde, white-skinned, uh, uh, blue-eyed blue -eyed mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. had to be produced. And so men and women, you know, in this experiment had to mate, and those children were kept in Nazi homes and so on. So I brought that on. That's right. But mm -hmm. I was amazed while I was writing this book, there was an article, a small item in the newspapers which said that, that there was some kind of uh, experiment for Aryanization which had been begun in India. That's right. I read about that somewhere, and I couldn't believe that this was happening. In fact, a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, fun was made of it on the social media. Sad fun, let me say. It was sort of tragic <laughs> comic. Um, yes. A picture of a, a young white man saying that, you know, this is the kind of Hindu uh, okay. uh, offspring yeah. we should uh, produce. Mm -hmm. Nantara, I wanted to, uh, in a time when um, uh, writers, filmmaker, uh, filmmakers, artists, the cultural fraternity 
is vulnerable to being hounded, um, in fact, as you've said, even to being shot. But the whole range from self-censorship to murder. Um, I think it's important to revisit what you've said throughout the book and, of course, in your real life. Uh, you returned your um, Sahitya Academy Award in uh, 2015. You spoke up against the emergency earlier and so on. That art has to be political that it has to take sides. Um, I think uh, we'd like to hear from you on this. Um. You see, we are all political <clears throat> in the sense that we live in a, poli a political environment. Um, just as we live, uh, the human race has different uh, kinds of natural environment. So we have had different kinds of political environment. And I think uh, human beings grow, growing up in a particular environment then uh, react to that, or their lives are affected, I should say, by that political environment. That's what I meant when I said we are all political. But certainly writers have uh, mm, not only not avoided it, but they have not been able to avoid it. Writers like um, Pinter, like Arthur Miller, like uh, all the great Latin American writers whose writing has been political and it has lasted for that reason, that it is reflecting a universal theme within its own context. And the human cost of that particular environment. So uh, how can even the feminist movement mm -hmm. has used the word political, mm -hmm. that the personal is the political. Mm -hmm. So there's no avoiding the political. Mm -hmm.